I had an epiphany. Elaine should have been international by now, like Shoma Chozi used to be. But there are some things that she did to delay her career and eventually fall off. I'm going investigation mode for this one. The good thing about falling off is you can rise up again. But chances for her, in my opinion, are pretty slim because she's doing close to nothing at the moment. But let's talk about how Elaine fell off. Before Tyler, music fans and the South African music industry had eyes on a young lady named Elaine. Elaine blew up with her lead single You're The One, making her debut EP going platinum and her song going seven times platinum in South Africa. I'm sure you know that song bruh, it was a smash hit. This was back in 2019 when R&B music was still going strong and Ama Piano was starting to gain momentum in the mainstream. People really expected her to be the next big thing and she also had the potential to do so as she signed with Columbia in 2020. She never released anything until 2021. I think because of the pandemic but I wish she would have released something and took advantage of TikTok as it was at its peak when it came to its algorithm. And her not releasing anything that year was her first big mistake on why she fell off. Now I don't like using the words she fell off, I couldn't find better words and when I say she fell off in the context of this video I mean it refers to a decline in an artist's popularity or overall quality of their music it suggests that the artist's recent work is not as impressive or successful as their previous efforts it's often used colloquially by fans or critics to express disappointment in an artist's recent output compared to their earlier work i hope that makes sense since 2023 people online have been saying what's happening to tyler is what people expected from elaine and i totally agree now let's dive deep into that statement and analyze why and how elaine fell off then tyler took off not to compare the two i'm just diving deep in that statement i got receipts okay number one elaine kept quiet throughout 2020 Elaine released her debut EP Elements on the September 29th of 2019, marketing and promoting the song pre and post released throughout that year. She released visuals for her lead single and rollout song which were You're The One and Risky. You can tell that those videos were pretty expensive but I'm sure it was paid off. Her EP is certified platinum and her lead single is so close to becoming diamond. 2020 came with a pandemic, she signed in 2020 then went mute that year. Like, what? Everyone in the music business knows that when the pot is hot, you gotta start cooking. But then she went on and turned off the stove. Like, dude, when you're new and there's hype around you, you have to feed the hype. There's a reason why people say you have to milk the cow when there's hype around you, especially when you're new in an oversaturated industry, you're easily replaceable. We can find someone else to feed our cravings. She could have collaborated with Shikana. And I might make a video about Shikana because before Elaine, I expected her to blow up in the US market. She also could have collaborated with Rolene, even though it's her rival. She could have. Nasty C, Telemann, Loiso, the list goes on and on. The only thing she did was drop the visuals for You're the One and Risky. But besides that, I haven't seen interviews, just nothing. But we can't go back in time, unfortunately. We just have to learn from the past and other people's mistakes. On the other hand, Tyler did the opposite. Getting Late came out in 2019. She marketed the song even during the pandemic. But don't forget that Tyler had already built up a following long before her debut single. So she wasn't quiet in 2020. She was growing her followers and developing her sound. In 2021, she officially dropped the music video, which opened more opportunities for her. Number two, Elaine signed with Columbia Records. That. Guys, before you sign a record label, please do your research on them and read your contract. Like, because you can't trust these record labels. And it's not Columbia Africa, it doesn't exist. It's the Columbia Records that have headquarters in New York, which is huge, but at the same time, it's not. Columbia is known for shelving their artists for years before taking them serious. Columbia fucked it up. And she's also competing 
with her label members like Beyonce and Adele. Now, if I'm competing with Beyonce, I know that the attention is always gonna be on her. What about me? On the other hand, Tyler signs with Sony Music Entertainment under Epic Records with a joint venture with Fax Records. Don't forget that she's also under a creative agency that gives opportunities to play gigs, open for big major artists, etc. As we know, artists who do more than singing, aka who dance and perform, make more money because they get booked a lot and she was already set up for success. They bought her for $2 million. It's enough to break someone and monetize off of that. Number three, her sound changed. Well, kind of. She dropped her single right now and the response was more bad than good. For me, it was cool, but I think I liked the music video more than the song. I liked the song, but not for me to go stream it, if you get me. I know the lyrics, but only because I watched the music video on TV and nothing else. But on Blake Twitter, people don't lie. Right Now was a decent song, it did sound like something she would release, it looked like a part 2 of Risky. Her next song sounded more pop than R&B and her song Shine, but before that she did drop Deja Vu and Fading Away which didn't really get push from the label or her. Until this day, we don't know if the songs are certified gold or what, or how many units it's sold. In my humble opinion, that song ain't it. Shine. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Maybe they were trying to make her appealing for the American market. I don't know. She could have built a strong fan base, but she isn't consistent in her brand. But tell me guys, what are they doing trying to get her to do Amapiano? I do like the song Loving You with Blackie and the song that she did with Major League DJs, I forgot the name of it. But I understand though why they, she or her label, whoever decided her to do Amapiano, I understand why. She thought she could blow up in the States, maybe? Some things are not for you, I get it. And since she's Venda... I'm sure there's a genre she can blend in with in her culture. Maybe, I don't know, I still can't imagine collaborating with Makazi. That would be dope or very wild. For Tyler, everything is going great. For her, they saw a polished girl who can dance, who can sing, who has made up her mind about the genre she wants to do. They gave her producers who can blend genres, songwriters who wrote songs for Beyonce, Tricky Stewart wrote my favorite songs for my favorite artist. That's, that man is a living legend, bro. Ari Penn Smith. I mean, bro, Semi Soso. Her record label believed in her from day one, like you can tell. Got her to open for Chris Brown, touring around Africa, I mean, Afrochella, giving her an outlet to promote her water song online and offline. Now, she dropped her album now. Elaine is yet to drop hers. <laughs> like, hey. Her not making music with her producer she started with, when she was releasing her EP Elements played a huge part because your producers know you best and you can definitely tell when there's chemistry between musicians. I personally think she could have stayed independent, maybe signed with a creative agency that can help her build her brand, market her to other countries, give her opportunities to open up for major artists, help with her brand and, and so on and meet up with some of the best songwriters. It requires money I know but I'm sure she has plenty of it. I think she still got it in her. She should have striked when R&B pop was still hot, but instead now things have changed. Um, piano is mainstream and R&B is no longer hot as it used to be. And I get that the genre switch, but the fans that she abandoned are confused about her brand and she doesn't have a name for her fans yet. Tella named her fans Tigers Hello, before tigers. she oh. even dropped her debut single. You're nothing without your fan base. She might not make it big, but she should at least dedicate herself to her fans and give them a name. She calls herself the Shining Star. She could call her fans the Shining Star, the Shining Armors, or the Eli Grass. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe I'm dragging it. I'm dragging it now. That's copying you. I don't know what it is, but Elaine reminds me of Nomani. Everyone knows that that girl is talented and she could easily become a household name alongside Beyonce. Sorry, Chloe Bailey. 
but her record label for years have been shelving her. She's been solo for 7 years now. She had great collabs with Khalid, Black, Cardi B. She can perform and even Beyonce gave her blessings but for some reason she is yet to drop an album. Where is the album? We need the damn album. People for years including me have been waiting for that album to drop but she's been mute. Now she's dropping it this year. The album is called Dopamine, but still, there's zero marketing, zero interviews, just teases. Girl mysterious like Beyonce, but she's not there yet. Imagine being a new artist for seven years before an album drop. Yo, but at least Diana Normani is consistent with her sound. Question of the day. What do you think Elaine should do? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you there. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you like videos like this. Let's conversate and debate and just like that, we out.